Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel and welcome to the biggest Ulta haul I've ever done here on my channel. I have been shopping lately, like a lot. <laughs> I have been shopping for new at Ulta products lately. There's been a lot that caught my eye and so I have a lot of products to show you today. I have a massive box, this won't even fit on the screen. And additionally, I've also been shopping in store. I cannot wait to show you everything that is in the box and in these bags. And in today's video, I'm going to be trying as much as I possibly can to tell you my thoughts on everything. There are a couple of products that I'm going to show you today, but that you will see reviewed independently in other videos. If you guys are excited, don't forget to please give this video a thumbs up. I'm super excited because a lot of what I'm going to show you are fall releases that have started to come out. This is my favorite time of year to film, to review, to give you looks. I cannot wait to get into it. So let's just go ahead and get started. You're going to have to excuse my friend right here. He was not invited to this party, but he showed up anyways. So we're just gonna have to deal with him. <laughs> I have to start by showing you what came inside the massive box that you just saw. And it is one of the products that I am most excited about. Now I bought the entire set because I am a freak and I had to have everything. But majority of the products I'm about to show you are also sold individually on the Ulta Beauty website. Everything I talk about in today's video will be listed and linked down below in the description box so please check out the description box for the links if you're shopping whenever you shop for my links you help out my channel anyways the product that came in the massive box is this beautiful thing right here Glamnetic, which is the brand of press on nails that you guys see me wearing all the time. It is my favorite press on nails brand it came out with a Harry Potter collaboration I already love their nails. They are the longest lasting. They last me at the very least two weeks. Sometimes I can get them to last me even longer. And the packs are around $20 each, which if you think about that versus going to the nail salon every other week, you are saving a lot of money. So don't judge me when I tell you the price of this, okay? Okay. <laughs> this entire thing was $200. If you're a Harry Potter fan like me, or if you love Glamnetic Nails, you will love it though because you get a ton of product in here. Let me show you what the outside looks like. It's like a book, see? And then once you open it, you have this section here. There's more. Um, these are the nails that I am wearing right now. I'm going to show you a secret to them in a second. These are the other pack of Gryffindor nails. We have a glass nail file that says Harry Potter and Glamnetic. Remover, glue, and then there is some extra stuff in here like information about the collaboration and some nail stickers which I'm not going to use because I like to glue them on. That's how you get them to last two weeks. Anyways, this is not it. There's more. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Take a look right there. So we have the Slytherin packs, the Ravenclaw packs. This is my house right here. And the Hufflepuff nail packs, which are my favorite. And then we have these right here that aren't from any house in particular. These are like Deathly Hollow nails. And, and these have a bunch of super cute little stickers that I'm going to show you. I'm not sure if every single pack of nails is available individually, but I did see a lot of them. So let me show you the ones I'm wearing first. These right here are the pack that I am wearing right now, which at first glance, I thought these were the most boring nails of them all. However, take a look right here at what they look like when they are hit with a little bit of heat. These are Marauder's Map nails. Take a look at them hot versus cold right here. And so they have a hidden map that shows up when the nails are warm, which I thought was the coolest thing. I am so excited about them. See, they're getting dark again. I'm so excited about these nails and the hidden map. Super mega cute in my opinion. Something else I loved about this entire set was that all of the nails were almond shaped nails which are my favorite shape of nails to wear from Glamnetics. And the ones that I find last the longest on me as well. Here's the second pack of the Gryffindor nails. As you can see, these have the sort of Gryffindor in one of them and they have a metallic sheen to them. These leathering ones are super cool. They have 
silver reflex in them and they have a silver snake in one of the nails each one of these packs comes with 30 nails so you are sure to find the nail that best fits your nail bed these are the other slithering pack right here which as you can see are nude with beautiful green designs and also a green snake in them ravenclaw which like i said is my harry potter house they have these blue ones with silver little moons and stars I think there might be a tiny little eagle in there as well. Then they have these beautiful nude ones with the French metallic blue tip and there is an image in one of those. It's the silhouette of the Ravenclaw Eagle. Out of all of the different houses, Hufflepuff definitely has my favorite nails. They have these beautiful ones right here which are kind of amber with gold details in them. They have different little silhouettes of things. Then they also have these nude ones with the gold details which are beautiful and then they have the Hufflepuff H right there. I hope the camera does these next nails justice because these are my favorite ones I think out of the entire thing. These are Deathly Hallows nails and they are matte black with shiny black details. You can actually see it really well on camera. So you can see a lot of them are matte black with a French shiny black tip. And then the other ones are matte black with the Deathly Hallows sign in the shiny black. I think these are super pretty and these are for certain going to be my Halloween nails. And then last but certainly not least, these super cute ones right here which have a bunch of different Harry Potter related stickers like the platform nine and three quarters sign, the hat, the glasses, the scarves, we have Hedwig in there. As I said, I'm super mega excited about these. I have no regrets on the $200 I spent on this mega huge thing right here, but I am very happy to know that the nail sets are also being sold individually. I believe they're $20 a pack. Um, and like I said, they are the longest lasting press on nails ever. I put these on and then I put them back in the box, the nail sizes that don't fit me because I don't even wanna mess up like how this looks overall i don't know where i'm going to store it but this is not getting thrown away anytime soon <laughs> moving on to some other things i bought at ulta i couldn't help myself i had to get my hands on the max studio radiance serum powered foundation right here i did do a dedicated review on this one so i would highly recommend that you go watch it spoiler alert it did not work for me the way that i wanted it to work for me it wasn't a long lasting foundation on me i have seen a few comments saying maybe i shouldn't wear it on top of magic cream because maybe it's like too much moisture on my face so i will continue to try this one in the future to see if with a different primer it works for me however i am pretty much married to magic cream at this point so if it doesn't work for me with magic cream underneath then it just doesn't work for me <laughs> that's kind of how i feel about it however i will try it further just to make sure but while this looked beautiful when freshly applied it um, very quickly started kind of separating on my face and disappearing in some areas, which was highly disappointing. Something from MAC that I have been loving and I needed another shade on is the MAC Everywhere pen. I tried this in my last Ulta haul and I fell in love with it. The color NC25 is the perfect color for my under eye areas and I needed one that would work for my entire face. So I ended up going for the shade NC30 and so I got myself another Everywhere pen from MAC because this product is incredible. I have been wearing this one. I figured I wasn't going to do a review on it because it's already been something that I tried a couple months ago. However, just to update you, I have worn it now two to three different times all over my face with the lighter number underneath my eyes and it is magical. My favorite thing about the MAC Everywhere pen is that it's very long lasting, very natural looking. It doesn't dry my face out at all and I don't have to put any powder over it. This is truly, truly a creaseless product. Like even the one I put underneath my eyes does not crease, does not move, does not budge. 10 out of 10, one of my favorite products that have been released this year. I fell in love with this, so highly, highly recommend it. Moving on to something that I bought today. This just came out. 
The brand is called Polite Society and it is a new brand at Ulta Beauty. Here we go, it says Polite Society right there. And they have a clean formula foundation. It says it's non comedogenic it says it's dermatologist tested. It is a vegan product, it's got niacinamide, it has willow bark, so it's brightening as well. It says it's a skin caring foundation for more than a pretty face. So we'll be trying this in today's video. I'm actually very, very excited to try it. I couldn't help myself with this next one. I went into Ulta looking for something else, but then I saw it and then I was like, okay, I have to review it because it's actually really beautiful. I'm talking about the Tarte Man Eater eyeshadow palette. How long has it been since I reviewed a Tarte palette here on my channel? Because I truly do not remember. I think it's probably been over five years since I tried a Tarte eyeshadow palette. And so I saw this one. The color story truly caught my eye and I had to have it. Now this one I will not try in today's video because this will get a video of its own so that I can at least do a couple of looks with it. But I have to tell you, I'm very excited to swatch this one and to create some looks because it looks promising. Because I bought the Man Eater palette, I got this little free gift that has a balm, a blush, and the Man Eater mascara. The palette that I actually went to Ulta looking for was this one right here. This is the Maple Syrup Pancakes palette from Too Faced. I review Too Faced palettes here on my channel much more often than Tarte, but I don't think I've ever gone for one of their fall releases that are usually like food related, but this one caught my eye. This will also get a video of its own because the color story is actually really pretty. Now my main question when it came to this palette I'm going to resolve right now. Where is it made? Because in the spring I reviewed their Italian Spritz palette which was made in Italy and not only was the color story of that one beautiful but the formula was much better than what Too Faced has been releasing lately. So I'm hoping that they also made this one in Italy because that means that the formulation of it is going to be good. Okay, it just broke my heart because it says it's bulk made in the USA, assembled in the Dominican Republic. So that's going to be an interesting review. Hopefully it's not too disappointing, but we shall see. You guys like it when I make this distinction. So everything I have mentioned up until this point, I purchased with my own money. None of the products I just mentioned were sent to me, but the products I'm about to mention were sent to me from the following brands. This first one though, I actually was going to purchase a couple of months ago when I did my last Ulta haul, but it wasn't in store back then, so I wasn't able to get my hands on it. And then Laura Mercier sent it to me, which I was very excited about. And finally, we are trying it in today's video. So this was sent to me, but I was going to buy it myself. <laughs> I'm talking about the new Laura Mercier liquid highlighter. Now, I was only going to try one of the shades. I probably didn't need all three, um, but they have three different colors and I will swatch them today. We have Peach Bronze, Gold Glow, and Champagne Pink, which is the one that I was most likely gonna go for. Next, a new mascara that I was also pretty intrigued to try, but I knew this was going to be sent to me, so I didn't even have to think about buying it, and that is the Fan Fest Mascara from Benefit, which we'll try today, and I'll let you know how it works. And then we have some new box and products at Ulta that were also sent to me, starting with the palette that we are going to use in today's video, which is this one right here. This is the Boxum Forever Babe eyeshadow palette. Let me show you what the inside of this one looks like because it is beautiful. Take a look right there. It has three different color stories in one. It has big, bold, and sexy, which as you can see is like a neutral to warm color story, a pink romantic one, and then a cool toned one over here. They also have these new eyeliners called Power Line, and they sent over five shades. We have black, we have brown, we have copper. So I'll use at least one or two of these to see if we like them. And then last but not least, they have false scented limited edition lip products. They sent me a cranberry scented matte liquid lipstick, a lip polish that is scented like sugar donuts, I think. And this one which has pumpkin in it and it is a lip cream i thought i was done but there is one more thing i bought at ulta recently and it's this right here this is a kitsch kit for heatless girls i will update you on this one 
the more I use it because I got amazing curls one day but then I tried it after that and I haven't gotten the same result and I'm not sure what I did differently so I'll have to keep playing with this one and I will let you know a little bit further ahead how the heatless curl journey is going all right so that was everything that is everything i've bought at ulta recently and a few products that were sent my way that are new at ulta as well like i said the two new fall palettes from too faced and hard are going to get their own separate video so that i can tell you all of the details and do a couple of looks with each and I did do a video already on the MAC Studio Radiance Foundation, so if you're interested, definitely check it out. I will not be using those three products today, I'm going to be using everything else I mentioned. First things first, let's put some foundation on. Here is what the bottle of the Polite Society Foundation looks like. It says more than a pretty face, skin caring foundation. This is made in the USA. It says it's got niacinamide and willow bark plus vegan hyaluronic acid. I match myself to the shade Light Neutral. And take a look right here at the consistency of this one. As you can see, it's not too creamy and also not too liquidy, kind of in the middle. I'm going to use this Sonia Kashuk sponge to apply it and just go for it. <laughs> it was pretty easy to color match myself in this one because they have a lot of neutral shades and neutral shades are always the ones that look best on me. As you can see, it has a beautiful medium coverage and it looks really thin and natural on the skin. They have a whole little display inside of Ulta that I saw, and they have some more products like a plumping lip gloss, a mascara, and a cheek palette. However, the rest of the products just didn't seem as interesting to me as this foundation because the foundation has excellent claims and it felt really nice on the back of my hand when I tried it in store. As you can see, our little friend right there is almost fully hidden, which is fantastic. The color light neutral was definitely a great color for me to get. And here's the light all the way down so that you guys can see what it looks like with the light down. Very natural, pretty thin, lightweight. It doesn't really feel like I'm wearing much on my face and it was extremely easy to blend out. I also feel like this packaging is pretty cute. However, you know how Rare Beauty makes their products so that they're easy to manage? This is not that. This is kind of the opposite. You really have to grip this thing kind of hard <laughs> to take it out because it's very, very slippery. I have to make a little bit of extra effort to get a good grip on this. So if you have difficulty opening things, um, keep that in mind. With the tip of my sponge, I'm going to grab a bit of my color corrector from Charlotte Tilbury and blend it right under my eyes and in the inner corner. And the same thing over on this side. For the under eyes, I'm going to use my MAC Studio Fix Everywhere pen. This is the color NC25, which is not the new color I bought. It's the first one I bought, but it is the one that I like to use as concealer. As I said, I already used this as foundation and it works fantastic. However, since I had a new foundation to try today, I'm going to use it as concealer once again. And I love it because I don't really even feel the need to powder this one. It is creaseless. It has a beautiful natural to matte finish, a fantastic coverage. I love it. So now that my foundation and my concealer are applied, let's move on to the box and palette. And before I start using this one on my eyes, I wanna show you the swatches of the shades. I just started grabbing them to swatch and as you can see, they are very soft and for the looks of it also kind of powdery. So let's see how they swatch. Pretty pigmented, but definitely more powdery than creamy, I would say. Not bad though, I really like the pigmentation. Here are the next four. This one right here felt creamy rather than powdery, but the rest of them felt powdery as well. So take a look. See, this one's pretty creamy. This one was a bit more powdery. They look similar once you swatch them though. So take a look right there. And here is the last four shades, which I love the cool tone mattes, but these shimmers are definitely the most boring. Once I start playing with this palette, I don't think I'm going to keep to a color story. I think I'm just going to hop around and use whichever shades I feel like using. <laughs> okay, let's go for the eyeshadow look. So the first color I want to use is this one here. This is a refer number 15 brush. 
that color in particular is the most powdery of all I mean wow you can definitely see how powdery that is let me just blend it anyways I'm just going to make myself even here that color is not good it's snowing on my lashes now moving on to hopefully better shades this is a Sigma E28 and I'm going to grab the pinky matte of the second quad and with that one I'm going to start building up the crease of my eye and the outer corner first I'm adding intensity and then I'm going to start blending the edges a little more okay so now that that shade is blended I'm going to go with the darkest color in the palette which is this one down here and this is a refer number one brush and I'm going to darken up things on the outer corner with it just packing it in place first and then blending out the upper edge the way I usually do okay that's spreading a little bit too fast hold on back with the previous brush <laughs> let me see if this blends it out better that dark color is not the best because look at how it wore off right here I'm going to add some more in a second but it looks intense on top of the other color on the crease but on its own it's looking hella patchy so I'm just going to tap it on the outer corner once more and pray that it stays in place right there I think that works definitely not loving this I feel like the dark color did the most it spread super fast and I don't know it doesn't look the most even hopefully with the shimmers we can fix it but so far meh I'm going to grab the one shimmer shade in the palette that was super creamy because I feel like this is going to fix everything hopefully maybe cross your fingers for me and I'm just going to tap it all throughout my eyelid area that kind of fixed a lot so let's do it on this side okay looking better feeling better and then for the inner corner I'm going to use the silver shade on a refer number 28 just inner corner and working it in through the crease ever so slightly same thing over on this side the shimmer definitely fixed it here is what the top of the eyes is looking like so far I'm terrified to do the bottom lashes because a lot of those matte powders are very powdery and I feel like they're going to fall all over my face but let's try it starting with the darkest matte color refer number three I grabbed as little as I could it's looking very pigmented it's looking good and it's not falling all over my face so far so that's exciting Sigma E27 with the light pinky matte shade and we are smoking it out down here this became a lot darker than I intended because the powders are super pigmented but also very powdery so they spread very easily <laughs> and so I truly wasn't going for the super dark smoky eye today but here we are let's see how these work on the waterline these are the new buxom eyeliners as you can see they are twist up and they have a pretty interesting flat tip to them and then there's this brush on the other side let's see how they do in the waterline for down here they're not the most pigmented right away but you can build them up to look nice and intense and I'm also adding a little bit right up here just to kind of tight line on top a little bit using the brush to diffuse the shade I used off the eyeliner is called throw shade <laughs> so take a look right there I went off camera and put on a contouring product because I didn't have a new contouring product to try in today's video but I do have a new blush the cute little tart blush that I was given as a gift with purchase for buying the tart man eater palette so we're trying the blush today I'm pretty certain I have tried these blushes before I might already even have it in my collection maybe as part of a palette or something but we are trying it here is the shade seduce I'm applying it with a BK Beauty a 507 and this blush is a perfect match for the eyeshadow look I went with today 
I'm excited to get into the Laura Mercier highlighter, so let me go ahead and swatch all three colors for you. Here's what their packaging looks like. You can definitely not tell them apart by like the shade of highlighter, unless you look at the name back here on the back. The first one we'll try is Bronze Peach, right here. I feel like I could possibly use this as a blush because it's not too shimmery at all. The color I was most excited to try is Champagne Pink. Let's swatch it right here. Good old basic color for a highlighter. I'm really liking that these don't have a lot of sparkles in them. And the third and last color is Gold Dew. So take a look right there at all three of the shades swatched. I think that instead of the champagne pink color, I'm going to do gold dew. It's a little lighter, so I'm just going to stamp it right here on the high point of my cheekbone and tap it in place with my finger. I would say this is even more natural looking than the Charlotte Tilbury highlighters. Let me do this side, which I can actually see on the camera. Again, blending it in with my fingers. I'm really not a big fan of how those colors blended up there. Anyways, take a look right here at what that highlighter shade looks like on my cheek. I'm going to blend it in with the blush. I didn't add any more blush to the brush, just whatever was remaining on it. And it is time to try a new mascara from Benefit. This one is the Fan Fest mascara which you can find at Ulta and also at Sephora. Here's what the wand of the brush looks like. It's kind of curled. And let me just go ahead and go for it. Here is the Benefit mascara fully applied and I was able to make it look nice. However, I'm not overly impressed by it. I definitely wish it had more volume. I had to build it up a whole lot in order to get it to look this way. And the main thing that bothered me is that I am a very messy applicator of mascara and I usually always get mascara on my eyelid. The easier that mascara is to remove from on top of my eyeshadow, the more I'm going to like the mascara. And this right up here is a mascara smudge that was impossible to get off from on top of my eyeshadow. So for that reason, I'm not overly impressed with this mascara, even though I feel like I got it to look okay. You guys have seen my lashes with much better mascaras. Even lately, I've tried mascaras recently that I'm obsessed with, like the GIF mascara and the Anastasia mascara that perform much better than this new one from Benefit. Last but certainly not least, let's try the fall collection from Buxom. This, as I said, is a liquid lipstick and the shade is Cranberry Smash. I think I'll try it to show you, but then I'll take it off to try something else. I'm not the biggest fan of fall scented things because I don't like pumpkin smelling things and I also don't like cinnamon, but this smells good. It's very minty and also very fruity, so I'm here for it. More or less, here is the lip color. I didn't pay super close attention to detail with this one. The next one is a lip polish. This one is called Daisy Donut, and it's a shimmering lip gloss. I think all three of these are definitely plumping because I am feeling it. It doesn't hurt or anything but I can definitely feel a bit of a plumping effect on my lips. Once again, I kind of sloppily put it on, but here is Daisy Donut. The lip polishes from Buxom are a little bit too sticky for me. They last for a very long time on the lips, but I do feel like they're a little bit sticky. Here. Lastly, this one is a lip cream, and this one is called Pumpkin Pie Latte. So you can take a look right there at the three shades swatched side by side. And this is the one I plan to keep on for the rest of the video. So take a look right here. This one is my favorite looks-wise. However, like I said, I don't love the smell of pumpkin, so it's okay. <laughs> it smells okay. It's not overpowering, I will say that. 
I feel like I sort of shared how I felt about all of these products as I went through them. However, let me give you a quick roundup of everything I tried for the first time today. My favorite product I tried in today's video, hands down, has to be the Polite Society More Than a Pretty Face Foundation. This is just the type of foundation that I usually gravitate towards. It has a beautiful medium coverage. It looks extremely natural on my skin. The color was perfection as you saw. It's wearing very beautifully. I don't have a drop of powder on my face other than the powder blush. And as you can see, it looks flawless on my skin. If I added a bit of powder to my cheeks, I feel like I could make my pores fully disappear, but it looks so natural. It feels super lightweight. It is a 10 out of 10. I really, really like this formula. Like I said, lightweight, medium coverage. It's just the type of formula that I tend to prefer anyways. So I can't wait to see how this foundation wears today and I can't wait to continue to play with it. I'm not sure what I was expecting from the Laura Mercier liquid highlighters, but they're okay, they're extremely natural looking, they add a fair amount of glow to the face, but there's nothing extraordinary about them. I feel like I still prefer the formula of the Charlotte Tilbury ones because they have a little bit more pigmentation. I feel like with these you need to add more product to get a better amount of sheen and then you end up spreading it a bit too far. Whereas with the Charlotte Tilbury ones just a tad bit adds a very natural but good amount of sheen to the top of the cheeks. So it was good but it didn't blow my socks off. <laughs> I told you exactly how I feel about this mascara. I have nothing against it, but it's not impressive by any means. There's a lot of other mascaras on the market that I prefer over this one, so it was kind of just meh to me. I really, really wanted to love this Boxen palette right here, but as you can see by how destroyed it looks after just one use, it was just not the right palette for me. It is extremely, extremely powdery. I didn't feel like I got the blend that I wanted in some of the shades and then some others were like too pigmented and they spread too fast. I wasn't able to blend them the way I wanted to. I ended up with like two different color creases. I feel like this looks darker over here than this looks. I might have also done that because I was trying to take off that smudge, but overall it just didn't perform the way I wanted it to perform. And so for that reason, I wouldn't recommend it. It's also a pretty standard type color story. There's much better out there. These were cute. They definitely put you in the full mood. My favorite was the one I'm wearing right now. I feel like it would look even better with the lip liner around it. The pumpkin pie latte. This looks beautiful. It's nude. It's juicy. It's a little sticky, but it doesn't bother me as much as the lip polish. This is stickier. <laughs> And then as far as the liquid lipstick is concerned, it has a beautiful red color, but I probably won't be wearing colors like these till like the beginning of December. And then the last thing from this video were the eyeliners from Boxum, which were okay. I also was not overly impressed with these. I feel like they would be very good if you like to um, draw a line on top of your lashes and smudge it for that. I feel like they would be excellent But I usually wear eyeliner mainly in the waterline of my eye and these are not the most pigmented So they were just okay and so I believe that was everything I tried in this video. Overall, I did really like this makeup look, but as you saw, we had some wins and some losses as well. I really hope that you guys loved this massive Ulta Beauty haul. If you did, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you're new to my channel, please don't leave without subscribing. I love you all so, so much. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye.